Hello, I'm Karen from Kaggy's Creations and today I'm going to give you an introduction to the wool and the techniques of wet felting, particularly flat felting. Um, first I'm going to look at the kinds of wools. We've got merino or carded bats, what we can do with those. Also how you can start off with pre-felt and merino on top. And then finally looking at Nuno felting, which is the laying of merino on the top of silk and letting the fibres migrate through the material to adhere. Obviously less layers with Nuno felting, but I'll explain shortly. So three types of um, wet felting that I'm going to look at today. First, we're going to look at the art of using merino wool. I'm going to show you what this looks like. You can get various qualities. Um, most of this is 21 micron, um, all available from World of Wool. And what you actually get is you get wool that is in long shafts like this, long lengths, all facing the same way. So it's not being carded, the wool is all stripped in the same way. And then you can take this wool and you can pull it apart and then I'll be showing you shortly the shingling method which is just pulling the wool out, laying it down and making a piece of material. So I'll pop that aside for the moment. So what you have here, you have um, a piece of uh, felt just made from ordinary merino that just showed you the kind of wool we've got there. Um, you layer it into different uh, horizontal and vertical corresponding layers and I started off with some plain white on the background initially and then layered my various blues and then on the top for some decoration um, I actually put some vicos on the top and then that gave me my uh, nice pattern. You can then use that piece of um, flat felt in an item that you might want to make um, as a piece of material literally um, or it could be the background to a picture. Um, then this is also done by the same method and here it's been laid in the form of a scarf. This is a very short scarf, um, basically it works out as a collar. You pop it around your, your neck and you can have a kind of coloured scarf like that. Um, again, done with the same method but it's actually only two layers because I wanted to make this very thin so it would have a nice soft drape. So this is much softer and will fall like a nice piece of material. This is a lot firmer because that's got three layers. So the depth um, and the use of your felt is important to understand how many layers you want. Um, then we're looking at the third piece of felt done in merino and this is done to the thickness of the first one with three layers on it, um, one particular one layer and then afterwards we put different um, stripes of red and then later when it was dry was used some embroidery um, machine embroidery just to give it some cover and this was used as a nice table mat to put out in the middle of a dining room table under a lovely vase of flowers and that was three layers um, to give it some sturdiness so that it could actually be used, utilized and wouldn't uh, get too soft so all of these are exactly the same method which I'm going to call A today and we're going to look at how that's actually done shortly. Um, now we're going to look at an alternative method which I'm going to call B and here further along my table is method B. This is using something to begin with as your background instead of building up several layers using something called pre-felt. So this is pre-felt um, this is not to be confused with toy felt. This is where you start off with a base of already partially felted felt that you get from um, a supplier and then you can add things to the top by way of your design. So you can either, as I've done in this one here, I've had some slices of a different pre-felt and then put some red um, merino, which we saw before, shredded over the top to hold that all together and felted it. So you just would put one one piece over the other, you can see there, and then just lay other walls over the top to adhere to it. And you can also cut out um, 
what you can do with it, you can use a piece of pre-felt, cut out other pre-felts to get shapes if you want them to be much more accurate, layer them over the top and then bring the whole lot together with a layer of fine merino on the top. You can even make your own pre-felt if you don't want to buy this. Basically you do two or three layers of very thin felt merino just in a simple colour. You half felt it so you don't get it to be fully felted and then let it dry and then you can utilise that and the final feltings pull together in another stage. And what I do is any old projects I've got I always end up using up a little bit of extra pre-felt and I keep these because then I can use them to cut out for shapes and maybe make some designs on my pre-felt for other projects. So that's option two which is B, um, using pre-felt and then felting on the top. And here we've got the most popular which is option C. This is Nuno felting and what you actually do is you place a piece of silk and you can see the silk here um, migrated into the fabric, it's all wrinkly in the back and that's been laid out on the table um, and then loads of pattern has been put on the top with merino. Now you probably only put one very thin one and a half layers of merino on top. What you want to do is get a very light and airy felt and you don't want it to be too thick so you can use it as a scarf or, or some such other wearable, maybe a top or a jacket, etc. So you want this to be reasonably airy and thin. And you can play with the designs on the top and then you wet felt it and the felt migrates through the silk to the other side. You'll get edges where you perhaps just tip those over at the edge. Um, you can make wonderful patterns with this and Nuno felting is becoming very, very popular. So you end up with three very different um, finishes, um, particularly using the less layered Nuno felt. It's much softer and it's great for any wearable items. Um, the other thing I've done on the Nuno felt, which I'll show you here, quickly reach for that. Um, a Nuno felted item that I did, which is with silk. So this is the silk is inside, and this was made on a continuous piece of felt with using a resist. I'm not going to cover resist today, um, but that was made into um, a lovely sort of tube, and that's used as a neck warmer. So you pop that over your head. I just pop that over my head now. Whoops. <laughs> taking off my glasses first. And then you can see you get a nice sort of drapey soft feel. So Nuno felting will allow you to make lots of wearables um, with your felt. So where do you start? I've got detailed um, videos showing you how to do general wet felting and how to do Nuno felting, which you'll see linked to the bottom of this um, video. What I'm going to show you today is just the different layouts and the different kind of wool you might actually choose to use. Because although you have the merino wool, which we looked at just before, um, lovely long staple lengths of wool, beautifully and soft, and that migrates really, really well together. Um, you can also do it with what we call like a felted bat. And this is like a carded Corriedale or carded Merino. And what you'll find here, if you look at a bat when you buy it, you'll find there are loads and loads of little layers. Um, and you can pull away the layers and end up with a really, really fine piece of felt that you can actually, well, that you can actually pop down and you put those in various layers over to make your base of your felt and then put your decoration on top. So I'm going to show you the layout on both those kind of methods. And again, It'll be depending on what you want to use the piece of felt for or what you're trying to make, whether you go for just sort of two layers or whether you go for three. I'm not going to show you the Nuno felt layout here. I've got two or three videos with Nuno felting and obviously they're much more detailed and you can have a look at those. Um, we're not going to actually felt the pieces. I'm just going to show you. first stages in this introduction to flat felting. So if we were trying to do a piece of flat felt like this with merino, 
three layers, no use of silk or anything else, just the ordinary merino wool. You start with your towel and your bubble wrap um, facing upwards and then you shingle out your design. Um, when you're doing three layers, you're going to need We'll see how much more we're going to need in a second. You're going to need a base layer, which you probably won't necessarily see. Your other two colours may be going over the top. I'm going to pull my base layer apart so it's not so thick to deal with. Often the uh, level that you get from the shop is too thick. Um, and then you're basically just going to clasp one end, hold the staple a bit further away from your hand. If you hold it too tight, it won't come out. Hold it there, it will come out. And you basically just shingle a very light wispy piece and then you would pull that down to make your piece say we were trying to do a piece in, in an a4 size and then you're going to just keep continuing doing that you're going to overlap slightly and i'm laying mine horizontally here to the camera and i'm just going to do three layers just or three wisps wide for this piece. Don't worry if you get a little bit clumpy here and there, you can sort that. And then just near the end, I'm going to turn that around just so that I can get a tighter edge because you find it stays straight in your hand and gets wispier. So you can see that I've got one layer of fibre that's actually down. And then I'm going to take my first bit of colour and we use the orange that we saw before and I'm just going to open that out make sure it's not all tight and then I'm going to do that in the vertical um, across this way by crisscrossing the fibres when you actually commence the wet felting you will then migrate them together um, the whole point is you're trying to open up the scales on the fibre so they join as I said, my full wet felting videos will show you how to do this. This is just to give you an idea of the kind of layout you would do to actually achieve a nice piece of felt. And here I am going vertically. So I've got one horizontal layer, one vertical layer, about three depths. I'm not worrying too much about the edges because this is just an example piece. If you find you can see little bits through, you just fill in the gaps. You want to get an even layer in your final layer. Now, I want this to be a background of orange, but I want it to be slightly orange and yellow. So I'm going to do some of my final horizontal layer across this way. And at the other side as well and then I want to give this a bit of a variegated feel so I'm then going to put some yellow I want something very sunny because I want to be able to make a piece of felt out of this for a nice summer project and then I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and take that across the middle just to finish off So you can see we've shingled here a bit short this really and then I'm just going to flatten that down and I will just be filling in now where I can see the, the white coming through so I get my colours but I'm not too worried because I'm not looking for a solid colour here um, I'm just wanting. Now at this stage if you wanted any um, decoration on the top like we've got here the vicos then you basically pop the vicos over the top there. The next stage when you've got your layout is to overlay your net and pat that down get the air out and then you would wet this out and then make your piece of flat felt. So as you can see, three layers, that will give you a nice sort of robust piece of felt that you'd be able to use for something. 
So I'm going to set that aside for the moment. Right, so the second way we talked about was using a piece of pre-felt. So I've set out my towel and my bubble wrap again. And I put my pre-felt down there. And then I'm going to use a little bit of my off-cut handmade pre-felt um, to make a design. And I thought what I'd do is just put a flower here. So I'm just going to cut out some petal shapes. can be not perfect because we're only doing a, an example here. I might want to use it later. There we go. So you can see very clearly there that you would end up with a sort of shape that you would put together. Cover with your net, wet it out and make your felt. So once again, we'll set that one aside. And for the final one, I'm going to show you is using the carded bat. Um, now this is Corridale carded bat. Um, this has already been loads and loads of small fibres mixed together, so it's already enmeshed. But I'm actually going to pull it apart um, because I want to a nice fine even layer so I'm going to use my bat like that and I'm going to pull some what I'm going to try and make here is a piece of pre-felt for myself to to use as a background for some landscapes with sheep and trees that I'm going to do later um, pop that out Together, only need a small piece, and then I'm going to lay some of this bat the other way. It's already meshed in different layers, but useful to be able to put it across. Um, if you have carded slivers, you can still do this, but you'd have to do it more in the, the method of long stripes. Carded bat is much more big pieces. So I'm just going to put a bit more of that way there. Now I haven't made this a uniform shape because all I'm looking to do is to get some green pre-felt that I can then put other colours on top. I'm not too worried what shape it comes out because I'm only going to need a very small piece. So I'm going to do a small picture. So you can see that, then you cover your netting, wet that out and make your, your shapes. I hope you enjoyed this introduction as to the different methods of laying out and the different types of wool that you can use for your wet felting and what you might consider using the, um, the piece of felt for. I'm going to actually wet felt out all these pieces of items. So whilst I'm not going to show you the full wet felting process, as I said, there's lots of videos on my channel. Um, I am going to show you a few excerpts so that you can see how the process moves from A to B. Here's the first piece that we just shingled out um, and I've covered it over the netting and I've been using my ball browser to basically wet it through, um, squeezing water so that I know that the air bubbles are gone. And then I'm just going to soak my hands with olive oil soap just to get some soap into the piece because the soap helps to move the scales apart. You can't have too much soap, you're going to rinse it out later, so don't worry about it. don't want it too wet, but you do want it to be able to go through. 
and then we're going to use my little tool here which I call a moolie which is basically a little fulling block um, ridged so that you can go like this through the netting netting holds it together and rub the felt and you're giving it tiny little agitation movements so the scales on the wall are opening out and starting to lock together now it's not a miracle process it doesn't happen in five minutes you do have to keep at this so you're going to see it I'm rubbing away So I feel I've got the soap and the water in the first level. I'm just going to pull back. You can see just pulling out the edge, pull back the felting so that it doesn't stick to the netting because it will start to stick into the netting itself. Do that, turn your net over, put it back and carry on rubbing. And you're going to keep rubbing until your felt comes together. You're probably going to rub a bit more than you're going to see me doing here. And the other way you can rub your felt together like this um, and another popular method is to roll the felt which I'm going to show you now. So I'm going to move that out of the way. Um, I'm going to just get another piece of bubble wrap. Can buy this bubble wrap from the post office as post officing supplies, packaging supplies. So it's easy to get hold of. We'll just keep that, which has been sent to you in various packages you ordered. Right, we're going to pull that over the top. You've got two bits of bubble wrap, both with the indentations uppermost inside the. Uh, sorry, not uppermost inside, so they're against the wall. And then I'm going to take an icing roller. You can either use that, or you can get a wooden rolling pin. Um, piece of tubing or broom handle anything that would give you the ability to roll that felt together and then you're going to do the rolling now this basically will pull the felt in now as it adheres in the direction that you're rolling you do have to turn your piece around 90 degrees four times and do it on each quarter as they say so that it shrinks and pulls together evenly when you get to the next stage which isn't the felting stage which is called the fulling stage which actually pulls together the felt and starts to shrink it the first stage felting is to make it into one piece of material the second stage fulling will help to shrink it and tighten it and make it more dense now i'm not counting particularly but Probably about 30 rolls if you're doing just a small piece like this um, then you can unroll it Pull that off, and then you're going to turn it around now by now it's holding together as one piece okay don't treat it too roughly because it's quite fragile so I've turned it around 90 degrees and then I'm going to roll it the other way. Probably about 40 or 50 rolls in the same. And go all the way around. Now it's not a very thick piece, so probably when I've done about 30 to 40 on each quarter, that's going to give me about 120, 150 rolls. I'm then going to look at it and see how well it's felted before I go to the next stage. Um, and I'll come back to you with that shortly. So here we are after turning it around four times. Um, we've got a basically a bit of material now rather than a load of just wool fibres. Um, how to test, how to know that your felting is ready to go to the next stage, the fulling stage. Basically, you are going to need to rinse this, so you do need to know it's not going to fall apart. So it's called the pinch test, and you just pull, pull at the fibres and make sure they don't completely come up. They may come up slightly, but they're not going to pull away. Um, try and get that a little bit closer to the camera. So when I'm pulling up there, you can actually see fibres are actually meshed together. 
Um, I don't think that's too bad. I'm going to full it quite hard, so I think this will probably do. So I'm going to rinse this, squeeze it out, get rid of all the soap. I'm going to rinse it in hot and then cold water. Then I'm going to squeeze it and bring it back and then I'm going to do the fulling stage. Here we are back. Um, I've rinsed my felt, it's held together. See the back started to migrate through the different colours. Um, now to full this, to bring this into a much tighter stage, I'm going to use a bamboo mat. One of my works small enough for the bamboo size I've got to do it with. Um, you can carry on doing it with the bubble wrap and the rolling pin, that works as well. Um, I just find this gives it a little bit quicker and then I'm just going to lay it out on there and roll it up. Now this is like a sushi mat or a bamboo table mat. You get a bamboo curtain if you've got a bigger piece, which I've got, um, and then you can use that. So I'm going to now roll this a little bit more aggressively. This is actually rolling the fabric harder. The agitation is tighter. Now we can see where we are on that, it'll start to curl up at the edges as you do it. Do turn it around because as I said it will shrink in the direction of your roll and you want this to be reasonably square. So I'm going to continue. If you have a much thicker felt, this is three quite thin layers. If you want to do something, you want a piece for a bag or a purse, you may end up with it much thicker than this. Um, you'll need to do a lot more rolling and you'll need to do a lot more fulling. Um, this is quick for demonstration purposes. There we go. Uh, roll it two more times. As you can see, it started to migrate in because it's not reaching to the edge anymore. So I've got a much smaller piece. I should have measured it before to show you. If you're doing something and you want to um, make a wearable, like a jacket or a waistcoat, and it's a lot more complicated, you do a sample piece and then you check how much it's shrunk. Um, and then you work out the ratio, is it 25% shrunk, 40% shrunk? And then you know how big to make your pattern to start with, because obviously your wearable is going to be a lot bigger than that. Um, this, is, this is the kind of thing you should be doing as a starter, as a beginner. Just learning to get a nice piece of felt um, and learning the techniques. I did say this wasn't a full wet felting video, but it probably turned into that as a demonstration. But it is difficult to give an introduction without actually seeing it. And I know people don't like to keep jumping to other videos, but please check out the other videos because there's a lot more detail. Um, and it will show you some little nuances. There's ways that you can speed up the process if you want to use a, a sander, a machine on it. It helps to do this faster for bigger pieces. Right, and there's lots of different ways that you'll see on the internet for fulling. You can see my piece has shrunk in quite a, quite a bit, but it's a lot tighter. Now you can carry on doing that, and I could turn that over. I might do it twice more each end just to get it a little bit firmer. And then I'm going to leave that overnight to dry. What I'm going to use this for is I'm going to use this as a background for a picture that I'm going to embroider on it. So I don't want it too big because I'm only going to do it in a, in a little 8x6 frame. Right, I'll say my piece of felt is relatively rigid um, and that's going to be left to dry. And what I am going to make out of it is a picture. Um, not this picture, um, but this is where I've used a wet felted background. Um, blue and I've made the picture colours of a sort of landscape and the sky. And then over the top I've embroidered it and then popped it in a frame. This one I'm going to make as an abstract, so I just need a nice sort of orange colour. Um, and I can also show you, I do like orange. 
because as you will see and this piece that I've already done in orange you can work this up quite incredibly um, this particular piece I've had lots of vicos and glitter um, lots of um, embroidery and also some raised bits of needle felting that I've added to it to make what I called a golden odyssey so I'm going to make a very mini one of these into a little frame as a gift for a friend for her birthday coming up soon um, hope she likes it um, Beats giving her one of my beanie hats which I also make hopefully she'll like that so that's the way to do the flat felting you looked at the kind of wool the layout and a very quick tutorial on how to actually pull it together I'm going to leave that overnight over radiator to dry um, and then I am also going to felt up the other two bits I showed you earlier on in the video um, and I'll show you some stills of those at the end of this video thank you once again for joining me and I hope that you found this really helpful please subscribe um, have a look at all my other videos no point in me putting them on unless anybody's going to look at them love to hear your comments and please please like when you subscribe hit the bell so that you get a notification of any of my new ones I'm trying to do them once every two weeks sometimes that doesn't quite work out sometimes you get two or three um, really depends how busy I am with the grandchildren thank you very much bye bye